also, because because you guys prepared a really great press press release and um, because like it mentions how um, people would uh, like doubt Pachora's abilities due to like stereotypes and um, because of like your unique experience between back and forth between Thailand and the US I wonder how like how do you see that like those stereotypes influence your music writing uh, or your musical identity um, or how do you challenge those um, stereotypes or challenges or um, prejudice uh, through music or not? I would say all of these in turn, they work as a catalyst to push me to work even harder because they would underestimate what I have, but at the same time, I wouldn't want to overestimate myself either. But at the same time, in order for me to be taken seriously, I knew that I had to do extra work to push myself out there and just to break those stereotypes. But a lot of times, I would also tell myself that sometimes you don't need a lot of talking as in you just record something profoundly and let the music speak for itself. And I think that that's um, pretty much also the concept behind this um, artist project, artist persona that I've been working on. It's actually, it's been born out of heartbreaks <laughs> as in just like heartbreaks with myself, all those secure insecurities that I've been feeling because I've always had those issues with myself and just really having this imposter syndrome. I would say if I were to sum it up into a sentence, it's like you're waking up every day and you're asking yourself if, um, you know, you legitimately have gotten to where you are or not regarding a lot of things, like regarding how people don't take me seriously, but at the end of the day, who am I to judge? Because if you know that what you're doing is already great, then you know it yourself. But then a lot of times, I know it can be so, so hard to convince people to change their minds, especially in this day and age. But I'd rather stick to the main, um, I'd rather stick to the ground that I've been standing strong on that I'd l let the music speak for itself and my contribution to the society just echo my intentions. Do you think there are specific aspects of your life that lead to these feelings? Um, I guess I could m mention a few um, that I can think of right now. Mm -hmm. Because the, it's just like that there's a lot to begin with, but I would say the two main things are the fact that when people look at me and I mean, of course I do get misconceptions that, oh, maybe like he, he, you don't look like you sing, you look like you only play the piano and it's probably classical. But then when they see me on stage, when I get on stage at open mics, then they would be pretty shocked that, oh, I, I can actually sing. But at the same time, it just goes to like, for me, I didn't, it's not that concerning, but when you look at the whole picture, it's more, there's this stereotype that maybe I can do the part in terms of breaking it and shattering it because anybody, anybody can sing. If you can sing, you can sing. It doesn't matter like how you look. So it felt reductive, but 
that's why I'm here. That's what I'm here for mm -hmm. to present myself as myself and let the music speak for my personality, speak for my messages that I'm trying to get across to people. Mm -hmm. So, so your, your, the press release that um, you sent us um, mentioned very prominently that you're openly gay. And do you want to talk about how that has affected uh, your music making? Um, I would say that a lot of times when you see, you know, those like famous crooners like Mariah Carey or Brian McKnight or Boyz II Men, it's always like about the opposite sex, opposite sexes. But recently we've seen the music of Frank Ocean or Brockhampton and that could sometimes play into that same sex concept. But for me, I just think that this is actually, um, I mean, it could be, I could feel foreign with the fact that I'm openly gay at times, but at the same time, I, I also see this as a catalyst that um, I can also act as the, the megaphone for people that feel the same sex love for the other person and I just think that um, at the end of the day, I'm just a messenger trying to get the message across from my perspective and hoping that there will be people that would relate to that. Mm -hmm. Have you written anything about this subject before? Sorry, like can you any... please come again? Um, have you written on this subject before? Um, not really, because I want people to focus mainly on the concept of um, the songs that I'll be releasing, but also at the same time, when I mentioned that I'm openly gay, it's just the fact that hopefully, like, I was pretty much hoping that there would be more people that would resonate with what I do. Mm -hmm. And I just think that it's, um, it can, I think it does, it, it is important for like, um, especially within the LGBT community that um, there are more love songs about same sex loves, I don't know, like, I mean, at the end of the day, when I see people changing, let's say when, when they're doing a cover and then they try to change like boy to girl so that it could fit with the gender of the person that's doing the cover, which at the same time, it's more of, so what? I don't care. It's more, if that's who you love, that's who you love. I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, just shove it in people's face and be like, oh yes, I'm gay and I'm here to convince you to turn gay for me, but it's more of just really providing that megaphone for the, the other people that are too scared to just really stick with the original um, pronouns or, um, you know, how they refer to the other person in the song. And if they want to use boy, use boy. If you want to use girl, you use girl. If you want to use he or she, it's, um, people shouldn't be ashamed of doing that, if you guys know what I mean. Yeah. Um, would you be willing or interested in sharing your coming out story? And I'm also intrigued that you said you're openly gay at times. Uh, and I, I'm speaking as a member of the community, so I, 
uh, I have shared some of these experiences. So uh, yeah, so I'm wondering if you're, uh, you feel free to say no, but if you're interested in sharing the story, we would love to hear it. Mm -hmm. So it was, so basically back in my high school, people kind of saw that coming that, oh yeah, like Pat's, um, he's acting gay, um, you know, but because of kind of like not so good relationships that I had with my classmates back then, they were unkind about that. Mm -hmm. But then also at the same time, I wasn't the best version of myself. So we all had a lot to work on, but I see those as, you know, just like a learning curve. It wasn't the best experience, but I did what I have to do. But at the same time, it felt like a coercion that they just went, oh yeah, like we know you're gay, you should come out. But then at the same time, they were being encouraging, but not encouraging at the same time. However, I eventually came out to them and it was pretty much um, nothing really changed, but just the way that they were pressuring, pressuring me to come out, that was a little bit too soon. And without like any encouragement, it felt really alone. But in terms of with my family, most of them handled it pretty well. And I'm just really thankful that as of today, I can tell people that what my father said to me when I came out was that, hey son, why are you even apologizing for being you? It's the same as you're just stating that you like rice more than pasta. <laughs> okay. It's the same as that and it still echoes with me until today and it's just, you know, at the end of the day, with the fact that someone might like guys or girls or both, it's just like, oh yeah, I like green tea, I like black tea, or I might like both. If they taste good, they taste good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you see um, a difference in, in uh, your experiences as an openly gay person um, in Thailand versus in the U.S.? Um, definitely, definitely. With, within Thailand, back then in 2013, people still had a lot of milestones to go through, but they were definitely working towards there. However, I can't really vouch my experience for anyone with that because my relationship with most of my classmates were not in a good shape back then, as in like before coming out, there was just a lot going on in terms of, um, you know, just one not being able to root for one another for the best that we could at that moment, but we all learned from the experience, but going into the States, it felt, it felt more open, but then at the same time, it all comes down to, you know, who you are as a person and it becomes more individually focused in the US. Mm -hmm. I wonder um, if you see yourself as like an unrepresentative among like this new wave of Asian artists being active and uh, like making names in the US. Like I was thinking about like Nikki or like Rich Brian, like they are not like American artists, but they are very known and they are putting the emphasis uh, of their career in the US or in the West in general. So absolutely. I can, yeah, absolutely. Great. I would, um, you know, that's kind of like 
um, one of those goals that I aspire to achieve in terms of, um, you know, me being taken seriously internationally and being known for the craft that I create. And I think that, you know, with the representation, I think it's, um, it's really empowering. I'm inspired by those artists out there that, you know, they've been grinding hard and go out, been going out of their way to show that we're, we're more than those demure characters. Because a lot of times it's like, okay, as much as we like or not like, the media has always been really, really manipulated. But, you know, in terms of like, who, who's been in charge of what goes out on the screen and what wins or what not, I just think that there's always been an, an unfair play. Mm -hmm. um, there's always been that foul play within, um, you know, big organizations, and a lot of times it's just, you know, if you guys get the stereotype that, oh yeah, like um, Asian men are more on like, are almost always more on like feminine side, but it's more like, of course, like that's not like, you know, 100% of the people out there, but it's more of like that, it goes to show the power of the media and by like, you know, if there are more representations within that, that, hey, like, we don't have to settle for that character, for that narrative, then I think it can be empowering. Mm -hmm. You guys know what yes. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of media representation, I wonder, um, if there's any specific efforts or things you've done in order to intervene the representation that you don't like to see? Um, at this point, I'm really gonna let my music speak for itself. The fact that I do r and I, um, I mean, I'm not afraid to just really, you know, go hard on those genres that I've been growing up with, I think that it should speak more volume as I go along. There's a lot in store waiting right now and I don't wanna give away too much, but I'm doing my best to just really being me as an artist and to, um, I mean, I see that the representation is important, but for me as an artist, I just want to spread the message. I'm here, um, I'm simply here as a messenger that wants to create meaningful eyes for everyone. So it doesn't have to be limited to just Asian communities or like, you know, certain groups, but I wanted to reach out to everyone, but also at the same time um, to bring awareness to the fact that we don't have to fit into certain narratives that people portray on the media mm -hmm. for us to like, you know, look certain ways or like for the other people to look certain mm -hmm. ways because what you see on the TV, like I said, there's deep fake, there's, um, you know, there's a lot of things that you can eventually say at the end that what you see is not what you get. Mm -hmm.